that people used to model population growth or to figure out different combinations for Punnett squares, which is for in genetics, it's a really big application. And in chemistry, we use math to figure out how much heat to put into a reaction to make it go through, and just how much of a certain reactant you need to get a certain amount of product, or the percent yield, percent error, that's all using math. And this year, we're in physics, we're using a lot of math in basically everything we study. So for example, right now we're studying universal gravitation. And everyone knows what gravity is, right? It's the force that makes you fall down. So in the universe, there's also gravity. And gravity is actually what holds planets in orbit. So in physics, we have this really interesting problem with two astronauts in a circular orbit around the Earth. and there is one astronaut here and one astronaut here. And this astronaut realized he forgot his headset. So he signals to the other astronaut to throw it to him. And to do this, the other astronaut has to use math, right? Because if he needs to figure out the speed to give the headset and the direction. Otherwise, if he gives it, if he throws it too fast, then the headset will escape orbit and it'll go to infinity. But if he throws it too slow, then it's going to get pulled into the Earth's orbit. It's going to get pulled into the Earth's field, and it's going to crash down into Earth. So as you can see, math is a really big application in pretty much every science. So I hope this gives you some encouragement to pursue your study of math, because as a student at a science and tech school, I can tell you that math is definitely an integral part of our studies. Thank you.